So, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video, and that one... Yeah, this one is uh, a bit unexpected. I uh, thought I was not gonna be able to make this video, but... When I went out today to meet up with a friend, I found that there was a note in my post box that said a package has been left for me at the uh, local DHL packing station, and... Well, here it is. So... Um, this package, well, I wasn't expecting to ever get this package because I had bought this thing one, maybe two months ago, and then the seller just stopped responding to me. So I, I thought like, oh yeah, okay, I just got scammed out of 20 euros. Why would someone try to scam people out of 20 euros by selling old broken graphics cards is beyond me, but seller wasn't responding and over a month later the package was still not here so I just kind of gave up on it. But then today it arrived. Um, I only found out that it is that package when I opened it up and looked in what it is. Um, so yeah. <laughs> there's like, oh there's a little screw that was loose. Huh. So yeah, so you can see the state of uh, assembly is uh, amazing. Um, what's that screw that's in it? That's like a, like an M2, M3, just motherboard screw. That's not from this graphics card. Where did that come from? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so this is supposed to be a broken GTX 780. Um, the main reason why I bought this is the heatsink, because that's a nice looking heatsink, and while I have a fair selection of GPU heatsinks, um, I just found this one was interesting, and the entire card cost 20 euros, and I was just like... Basically, I was hoping to maybe adapt this one for a GTX 260, but, well, as it stands, it's the 2nd of April, and the competition ended two days ago, so... <laughs> No, I can't do that. Well, I can still put it on, but like it's not gonna do much for me. We, we're pretty much done as it comes to 260s. Um, but yeah, like I still have the heatsink now to use for whatever I want, and I also have another GTX 780 reference PCB, which I gotta be honest is probably the card that I own the most of because this is now my fourth, technically my fifth reference GTX 780. I also had two 780 Ti reference PCBs. Um, no, actually, wait. I just have to think about I have so many reference 780 something cards. I had a reference 780 MSI that had a blown up power stage and that I failed to repair and eventually found out like, well, I, I found out the corner is dead. Um, and it became spare parts. Then I had a second MSI reference 780, that one's fine. Then I had a third reference 780, that one is also fine. Then I had a normal NVIDIA reference blower 780, that one is currently fine, but has an awful core and has dropped dead twice. Then I got another Zotac 780 that had a blown up power stage again, that's currently in the process of like being ready to get e-powered. Um, and now I have this. And then there's also two reference 780 Ti's, uh, one of which I repaired in the video and the other one I sold a long, long time ago to the friend of a friend who needed a graphics card. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a lot of reference NVIDIA 700 series cards. Um, not, not that they're great, they are pretty bad. But hey, I have one. Um, and I guess just pick it apart, see what state it is in, and you know, we can repair it. A graphics card is a graphics card. And given that I have so many of these, I can try some admittedly very interesting things, because I don't need to be worried if I break any of them. Especially because, like... Oh no, this this, this thing came loose. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah, but like, um, those two MSI reference cards that, I'm talk that I was talking about, those have, like, really good cores on them. Interesting, the uh, cold plate wasn't covering the entire die. Is that why it's dead? That would be unfortunate, because that's that's not repairable. Um, anyway. 
yeah, like, why does it have this round thing? That that makes it incompatible with basically any big GPU. That's a bit bad. Um, let's remove this last screw. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, this thing is very dusty. <laughs> and the I.O. shield is just... Let, let's just remove it completely, like... Uh, Okay, so this one is an EVGA, but it's still a reference PCB. Uh, interesting that they put this giant heatsink on the inductors, and not the actual DR mosses. Uh, I mean, they still have something on them, which is fine. Why did they put that QR code over the PWM controller? Also, why did they put a heatsink over one of the 12 volt input filtering inductors? <laughs> why? Why does this exist? <laughs> like, the rest of the heat sinks make sense. Like, even this one kind of makes sense, because inductors get hot. Um, wait. These also don't make sense. These are on the capacitors. Why? Like, I can just break those off usually. Oh, well, maybe not. Um, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see any major issues. Uh, I guess let's just clean off the core and see if it's like chatted or anything because like the the edge is not being covered by the heatsink Yeah, that's not great because um, You can very easily end up in a situation where that corner gets very very hot and And the cut just burns itself out even if it thermal throttles like if you have a bare die that's not covered at all it's still very easy to, like, just die. <laughs> okay, it's a GK110 300B1, so this is a 780. Um, and, uh, yeah. I mean, the core looks fine to me. Alright, um, so... Let's start... Stabbing. So let's just see if we don't have any major uh, short circuits right away. So uh, let's just use the shunt resistors. That should be PCIe. That's fine. Um, six pin. Fine. Eight pin. Also fine. So no major short circuits on the inputs. Let's also check 3.3 volts. Uh, one. Oh. It's also fine. Okay, so no major short circuits, which. Well, that, that that probably means that none of the V-Core power stages is dead. There's two more things that are commonly wrong with this card. That's, uh, the second thing would be one of the VMAM inductors blowing up, but these look fine. Which pretty much only leaves a, a dead memory chip. But, you know, maybe it's something different. It could technically be anything, but those are like the most common things. Uh, so, V-Core resistance. That's uh, admittedly a pretty high resistance. I was expecting like one, maybe two ohms, but that's fine. Uh, memory resistance. Hello? That's fine as well. 90, that's a bit high. Is this using Samsung chips? Because like all the other 780s I've had have exclusively been Hynix AFR. And I think those should only have like 70 ohms, but maybe that's because this card is cold, like I literally just got it in from uh, where it was stored. Uh, PEX rail, that's also fine. And then like, well, uh, yeah, uh, like there's a 3.3 volt thing here, that's fine. And then there's a 5 volt somewhere that should be this, that's also fine. So no short circuits. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I, I guess now we could, like, put the heatsink back on and turn it on. And see if it, like, works. Or if it's artifacting, in which case we're gonna run mats on it and find out what's wrong with it. So, yeah, I'm gonna... Wait, this heatsink is, like, bent. Huh. But, yeah, um... For sh like, if... It, I technically wouldn't want to use this heatsink with it because it's not covering the edges properly, but like this card was obviously used like that for a while given how dusty it is. So it's not like it's gonna break the card more if that's the issue. 
So I'm just gonna reuse this heat sink in a, like right now and then we'll see. Yeah, it's a bit of a bummer that the cold plate of the heatsink looks like that. It's... That would have also meant... Because, like, the GTX 260 die is also pretty big. Pretty sure that would mean it doesn't cover this either. This, this might be good for, like, a GTX 680 or, like, a 7970. Like, a GK110 or a GM200 or a G200. That, that's not gonna fit. This might work on like my 1060, for well, that would be great. Um, yeah, where's that last bit? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna use these to make sure they're actually tight this time. Thermal paste. I'm gonna be down to my last tube of GD900 soon. I hope that replacement stuff I ordered from AliExpress is gonna arrive soon. Or else I'm gonna be out of thermal paste. I have to bother pre spreading it, it's not covering the entire die anyway. D just disclaimer you should not do that. <laughs> like, you should be using a proper heatsink. It's just because. Well, this cut was used like that for a long time, so it's not like I'm gonna make it worse by using this heatsink on it again. You should really put like some washers below this. I, I, I do not like how this spring goes like in between the, uh, like into the hole. Yeah, without washers, this is not a great mounting solution. Ugh. God damn it. I'm gonna put some washers on this when I reuse it on anything. Just doesn't want to. It does not want to go on this. It does. Come on. What's wrong with this one? Just stick. Why do you not? So this one's on, this one's not on right, so that one needs to be redone, so that one's not straight. Okay. Yeah. That's the heat sink back on, and let's throw it on the test bench, shall we? Alright, so here we are, cards on the test bench. And let's turn this on and see if it catches fire. I said. Okay, it's not catching fire. And yeah, um, let's see what we get uh, once this thing boots up properly. Currently still posting. B2. Ah, oh, it's a long B2. It's a long B2. Oh, oh, we went past B2. Oh, oh! Um, I don't see any artifacts yet. Huh. Wait, is it loading the driver? No, it's not. Resize properly, though, which it shouldn't normally do. Uh, yeah, it's running the basic driver, but, like... Yeah. Okay, uh, we have Hynix, uh, sadly, so, yeah, not really special. Um, let's just, out of curiosity, not DLSS, AC quality. Yeah, okay, this one's, uh, <laughs> this one's made out of wood. Okay, um, 
Let's see if it installs the actual driver though. I'm not seeing any blatant artifacting. Okay, which one is the newest that supports Kepler? I guess this one. Um, yeah, like I don't remember what was supposed to be wrong with this. I think it just didn't say. It could totally be that the thing that's wrong with it is just like, oh, you know how like not the entire die is covered, so it's thermal throttling to hell and probably just turning off at some point. That might totally be the thing that's wrong with it. Um, but I don't know, like, it, as long as it's not a dead memory mod- well, actually, if this was a dead memory module, this would be a perfect card for me to practice replacing memory chips on. Um, but, like, for the sake of the card, I <laughs> I hope not it's a dead memory chip. There, there's other things I could practice on. Um, like, if this just works, then, I mean, it's not like I need another 780. I already have an e-powered 780. And a non-e-powered 780, that's really good. Um, but like, you know, an, an extra 780 is an extra 780. Maybe I can just test something on it. Just mess around with it. I don't know, give it to a friend who wants to get into overclocking. Whatever. Um, okay, so it looks like the driver has initialized. And we still have an image. Yeah, we have 100... Okay, you can't see it on camera, but the screen is now at 144 hertz. We do not have an NVIDIA control panel for some reason. But... Okay, we need to restart afterburner. But we should... Yeah, and now it shows up as a 780. We have everything correct. How hot is it getting? 34 degrees. Yeah, you don't have a hotspot temperature on Kepler, sadly. Um, it's power limited? Huh? Oh! Wait, what's the power limit on this? I might be onto something. Um, seriously, oh, it's NVIDIA BIOS. Yeah, this has a, like a 250 watt power limit. Why? Okay, so this is interesting. It's hitting the power limit while drawing like, you know, nowhere near 250 watts. This is potentially an INA3221 issue. So the INA3221 is the chip on the board that's responsible for measuring the current draw through the shunt resistors, and it uses those current measurements to figure out how much power the card is drawing. And sometimes that chip can be faulty, or like something around that chip can be faulty, which skews the power reading, um, or more like just causes the card to thermal uh, power throttle very, very early, because it's not supposed to be uh, power throttling here. It could be power throttling because maybe it's just drawing, like there's an individual limit for every input. So there's a limit for the PCIe slot, for the 6-pin, for the 8-pin, and then an overall limit. So it could just be hitting one of those limits. Um, yeah, so I'm going to run a few tests and see if this card works properly. Or maybe if we need to investigate a bit more. Like maybe this power limit right there is not supposed to be there. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna run some tests and see if it, like, performs properly, and if it doesn't, um, we're gonna have to do a bit more digging. Okay, so I did some tests, and, well, in terms of performance, it's perfectly fine. We are spot on the average, so, yeah, this reference GTX 780 is performing just like a reference GTX 780 should when it's not overclocked. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I have a feeling that these readings, while they look a bit weird, might actually just be erroneous. Especially if you look at something like this. Um, MVDDQ, which should be the memory power rail, is apparently drawing 100 watts, while the actual GPU chip is only drawing 70. That is a bit weird. Your memory chips should never be drawing 100 watts of power. Um, and giving them a bit like a light touch, yeah, they are not as hot as they would be if they were drawing 100 watts. Because there's 12 memory chips, that would mean almost 10 watts per memory chip, and trust me, you could feel 10 watts per memory chip. Um, so I think these power readings might just be wrong. Um, yeah, especially because, like, before, we were hitting the power limit at 150 watts, and now it's drawing 180. So clearly the limit is not 150 watts. Here we even have 192. Like, yeah, 
Um, I, I have a feeling that this might just be wrong. Um, this system has AMD drivers on it. Maybe that's the reason NVIDIA and AMD graphics drivers don't always interact in very good ways. Um, but yeah, like everything we can say, like, you know, just around a gigahertz core clock, the memory clock's fine. Like everything about the 780 seems to work perfectly fine. Now I don't know how well it overclocks, or how big of an issue the not entire coverage of the die is, like the average temperature is great, like 45 degrees only. That That's, that's fantastic. Um, but yeah, like... <sighs> It seems like this card works just fine, um, at least right now. Like, it could be that, that temperature problem where, like, an edge of the die will just get very, very hot after running it for a while, but, I mean, I'm gonna fix that by just putting a different cooler on it. And the power readings, well, they look weird, but the performance is fine, and it's, like, 180 watts is also what a reference 780 should be drawing when it's not overclocked. So... Yeah, um, everything about this so far seems fine. I'm gonna run a bit more, like a few more tests. Um, so if this isn't at the end of the video, then I might have found something. But um, I'm honestly not expecting to find anything. I, I will still run the tests to make sure. But so far, um, I think the cart works perfectly fine, actually. So nothing was really wrong with this, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bet and say that this is probably the end of the video. So thank you all for watching and until next time, goodbye.